Hey, what's up everybody? It's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of TheCreditRepairShop.com and in today's video, we're gonna answer questions from YouTube. I really appreciate everyone who places those questions on there because I believe that your questions are actually the same as other people who may not be um, you know, willing to put their stuff out there on uh, YouTube and ask questions. So here's the first one that we got. Uh, it says here that they received a letter. I did a video yesterday, and if you didn't see it, you need to go to it. There was a law that went it that was enacted in November of last year, 2021, that required uh, debt collectors to use what's called a re Regulation F debt validation. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, de uh, Regulation F form when they're sending you that letter, the 30-day letter to allow you to dispute. It had a little bit more information on there. It's uh, making a debt collector kind of do a little bit more research before they send it to you. But it still had a lot of gray areas in there. And um, someone said that they received a letter and it said that it was already on the reports. Well, it's probably because they've already sent the letter before and they're just resending the letter again. Uh, that would be what I would think would happen from that. But if you did miss the first letter, or if this is the first letter, letter you have a right to do the response to that letter, and you're going to do, uh, number one, if it's a third-party debt collector, you're going to use my cease and desist collection activities letter first. That's the one that you're going to use first, because that's going to bag them up and say, hey, do we have everything to prove that this person needs to pay this debt? It's going to be more than just trying to ask about the amount and some statements and stuff like that. Uh, here's another one here. Uh, individual was in a, uh, had a bad situation with CarMax and American Credit Acceptance, lost a car, car was sold at auction, and, uh, they were recently notified that they were uh, part of a class action lawsuit. They were Their names were actually included in there because obviously it must have been something that went on with CarMax and American Credit Acceptance. And they were just wondering what, you know, what's their next move. I would say what you need to do is you need to contact the uh, 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 administrator of the, of the uh, class action and see what relief you got. I have a letter right here. This is real deal. This is one of my clients, one of my business clients that um, was uh, uh, had some stuff that had to come here because he was in transitioning from something. And um, he didn't even know uh, that this was coming, but this was something that we had been disputing uh, it was a class action lawsuit, but it, you know, we, you know, some of the times you don't think you're going to get anything. Well, this is what they sent. I'm going to cover up the name, but they sent him this. I was like, you know, you have a check here. <laughs> well, you have a, a letter here uh, that, that came to us to our office. And I was like, uh, you want me to go ahead and open it up or you want to open it in front of me? He was like, no, go ahead and open it up. You trust me. And, uh, I opened it up and it was a check uh, for class action. So, uh, you know, these class actions can take years to work its way out, but that was a pretty nice check. He can uh, pay for uh, some nice uh, going to dinner with him and his wife on that. So here's another one here. Uh, someone stated that Winston Strout did the same thing. He was one of the uh, online gurus for the 1099 secret 1099 a secret bank account he ended up getting sentenced uh, in trouble for that uh next one was a person said that they followed what i said to do uh they uh they had a debt collector a debt collector was approaching approach of contracting okay watch the hearing Watch and hearing your approach of contacting a debt collector. They said it was interesting. So I went through another process, another process by submitting one of those legal letters and requesting everything you suggested. 
You went through another process, but you did what I suggested. I'm not sure how that works. If you do what I suggest, you're supposed to use my process, but we'll just go off of what you're saying here. The response was, we are happy to abide by the blah, blah, blah credit laws. You send us the inaccuracies from your bank statements or inaccuracies from your statement, from your account statement. The original creditor was bought out by another bank officially September 2018 and no documentation at all. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Number one, you got to use my process. You got to use my documentation for my process. You can't use my, another process uh, submitted another process by submitting one of those legal letters and requested everything you suggested. Not sure about that. Let me tell you what I say to do. This is what I say to do. If you do it my way, you do it my way. You do it somebody else's way, you do it their way. Number one, you find out where you're at. If this, if, if this, from what I'm reading here, if you have a loan with someone and another bank bought it out and you're just trying to figure out if you have to pay that bank, you have to pay that bank if they bought it. They own that loan from what I'm looking at your statement here. If it was a bad debt and then another bank took over that bank and they inherited your debt and you're trying to say you want them to validate everything about the debt, then you need, and, and if you did that with the process that you got from somewhere else, they're gonna be sending you a batch of whole, of, of all of the stuff that they have. And then you need to sift through that batch and then what you don't agree with you put in a letter and you say i don't agree with this if you don't agree with all of it you're gonna have to put point by point what you don't agree with so it's not gonna be just where they you you know yeah they're gonna say we're gonna abide by the law what they're saying is they're abiding by the law and they're gonna send you everything to prove that they want to be able to collect and get the money that they believe is owed to them and then if you don't believe that it's owed to them, you need to be able to come back with your reasoning. And it's not just, I'm not going to pay you. You need to have uh, a good argument behind it with documents. If you can uh, recover documents to prove that you shouldn't have it, that you shouldn't have to pay them specifically. If it's a third party debt collector, this is where we move over to, it's not the original creditor. It's not the bank who bought it they sold it to a debt collector so when you're sending the letter and this could be a uh, something that you maybe were asking if someone else has a debt and you're trying to get the information removed off your credit reports then you shouldn't be doing any validation to them. You need to be explaining to them why that information needs to come off of your credit reports. And the way to do that is you need to get your credit reports and you need to look line by line. And that's why these free credit reports don't do justice for people when they're trying to get stuff disputed because there's information that is hidden on the free ones that you need to get on the ones that you pay for. And there's a link at the end of this video on where you can go to get that or the link below here. But what you need to do is you need to, if you're trying to get it off your credit reports, you're not dealing with it as a debt anymore, then you need to look at the items to break apart the inaccuracies that's on your report for that item. It doesn't matter if you owe the debt or not. If it is inaccurate, the Fair Credit Reporting Act says that it has to be 100% accurate or it must be removed. The thing with it is that most people would challenge just saying that it's inaccurate without putting the reason why it's inaccurate. And that's why a lot of people are unsuccessful with getting stuff removed off their credit reports. Now, next one. New visitor. Someone stated that they got a letter regarding a charge two years ago from JP Recovery Services. Could I ignore this? No. You can't ignore it. You must respond. The reason why you have to respond is if this is what we talked about with, with the person with the uh, 
letter that was sent by the debt collector. They claim that they sent the letter. If you don't respond, you're allowing them to place the information on your credit reports. And if, if you're giving them the right to put the information on your credit reports, if you don't respond, use my cease and desist collection activities letter with this third party debt collector. You said JP recovery services. I don't know uh, who that is, but you need to send cease and desist collection activities letter to them, making sure that this JP recovery services know that you're going to make them prove every piece of what they're claiming you owe on that debt. Also, while I'm looking through here on the next ones, watch out for people who are claiming that they're our company. Uh, some of the times they put a fake image and that is not us on there. Watch out for that. Uh, let's see here. The, uh, let's see here, go through my notes here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to be ending the video here. If you have any questions or comments, please ask them. No question is stupid. Uh, your questions help other people. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that. If you need help with your credit, please visit the creditrepairshop.com. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different. Uh, where I show you my eight-point validation process and my two-phase settlement process. If you need your Which credit reports and scores, go to the website, your the number three scores com to grab those. If you uh, have debt collectors coming after you, grab my three-pack of letters. They're for free. The uh, statute of limitations letter for time bar debt or debt that's passed, legal statute of limitations to collect. The cease and desist collection activities letter and the debt validation letter. This is strong. This will stop debt collectors if you do this and you do it the right way. And we're not talking about an original creditor. I want to be clear, not original creditors. If it's an original creditor, your next move for that is ask, you know, if you have a problem with the debt, then you work that out. But if you don't have a problem with the debt, you took the money, utilized the money, you owe them, you just can't afford to pay it all, you need to talk to them about doing a settlement. Please like this video. Please comment, share. Thank you for your time.